All right, hey everyone, this is Joe. I'm the Digital Astronomer. I've got my best friend Charles. He's in uh, for the weekend here in Southern Illinois, and we're doing some imaging together, a little collaboration. And uh, this afternoon, we were surprised to see that this arrived. It is the Dwarf 2 that's been given to me to evaluate by Dwarf Labs. And so we're gonna quickly open this thing up and get a look at it. So, Charles, you wanna, you, you wanna do the honor, sir? You wanna? Yeah, let me try this out here. It's one thing I'm good at is opening boxes. Opening box. Actually, I take that back and fa failing immediately. Oh, I think this is the top. There's the top, yeah. Opening boxes and breaking hearts. That's what you do, isn't Hell it? Hell yeah. <laughs> Open here. All right. Let me this. All right. Let's, uh, let's try to slide this out here. We've got a box inside of a box. All right. There we go. There's the dwarf two. We can take a look at it. You can see it right here. This is a little smart telescope, and I've watched uh, several videos on it. It looks really exciting, and we're excited to get it out tonight and uh, see what it does. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll take these plastic off, try to find out what's in this box. Well, you want to cut that uh, plastic right. open there? Using mine. This is the best tool I ever bought. What is I it? I buy it. It's a, it's for a can of sea rations. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it uses this to open up. Uh, oh, man. They used to come in tin cans, all the rations. Nice. Look at this, how easy this thing works. That is nice. I don't think I've ever seen one of those. Uh-huh. That's pretty I cool. I got this of a box of sea rations. It was dated 1968. Wow. Hey, you cut this little piece of uh, tape right there, too. Right. But this tool is the awesomest, greatest, uh, it's almost like it's purpose made to open up boxes. Yeah, yeah, it, it really does. All right, so here we are, we got the box open. Uh, first thing we see is there's a little uh, box here, see further. It looks like it's got all the instruction manuals. No, no, this is going to be uh, maybe some wires. Oh, Ooh, no, filters. it's the filter. All right, this has got, uh, this is a little filter wheel or I don't know if you call this a filter wheel or eyeglasses. I don't know what exactly oh, they call that. Like, I think they call these opera glasses. Yeah. Because you would hold it's this like up glass. when you want to look at your opera from yeah. the balcony. But we're not looking at opera. We're going to look at astro. So, I I, awesome. I, can, I can look at opera and HO. Good deal. It comes with a couple filters here. There are two solar filters in there and then a uh, high contrast filter, kind of a light pollution filter. And uh, we'll, we'll take a look at those and try to figure those out uh, as we go. So that's the filter stuff. All right. Then we pull the rest out here and we've got, it's well packaged. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. We're going to have to get your little... Uh, Sea ration tool out there. <laughs> There's actually a designation for this. This actually has a U.S. government uh, designation. Really? Yeah. Well, do you know what it is? Yes, it is. It's, it's a P-38. A P-38? I yes. thought that was an airplane. It is a P-38 Lightning, uh, <laughs> a.k.a. the Fork-Tailed Devil, if you bought in the little flow. This is uh, also <laughs> our, our, our <laughs> sub-channel. Uh, in addition <laughs> to the sub, uh, the digital astronomer, we have the, uh, the uh, World War II Aviator. <laughs> Okay. Really about these uh, all right, so let's open up. It comes in a nice carrying case. I like that. That's always very handy. And from the from the instructions and the videos I've, I've read, this is really important because this is how you're going to talk, take your dark frames. If you don't know what those are, stick around. In future videos, I'll tell you all about them. But um, we open it up. All right, and here is uh, looks like uh, looks like a strap. Maybe this is a strap uh, for the carrying case here. What else we got? Oh, here we go. We got Ooh, the Dwarf 2. We've got it. And uh, let me see. I think I can just tear this one open. I'm amazed at, at everything I've watched and read on this. I'm shocked that they can put the amount of abilities that this thing has in such a small package. That's not much bigger than you know, sort of a, the little Webster's thesaurus, thesaurus and dictionaries we used to use as kids. Um, uh, not very big at all, but um, really, really nice. I'm, I'm, I'm liking that. Um, so here's where we put the batteries in. Of course, the optics are all in here. Um, let's see what else it has. It's got some more stuff. This looks like the battery right here. 
We've got, uh, and here's the little tripod. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a photography tripod, I think, and set it up a little bit different. But here is the, the small tripod that's in here. Hey, bonus. And bonus. Oh, look at this. Comes with a Samsung 64 gigabyte, um, what do you call that? An S, uh, SD, card? SD card. SD card. And so we're going to be able to plug that in, save our data onto that. And then uh, the moon's up tonight, so we're probably going to try to get this set up and try to do something with it. So. Okay, guys, uh, this is the next day, actually. My buddy Charles and I imaged last night and played around a little bit with the dwarf. We didn't really make any video because we just kind of wanted to figure some things out. Uh, you'll notice I have my uh, regular camera tripod set up because this is what I'm going to mount this on. Uh, the, the dwarf comes with a little small tripod that I showed you yesterday, um, uh, or as you're watching this just a couple minutes ago. Um, but I've decided to go ahead and put it on here. That gives me a little bit more control. It's a little bit sturdier. And um, you can you can use the uh, stock tripod if you want, or it's very easy to pick this up. This is about a $35, uh, you know, just regular camera tripod is all I've got. A couple of things on the Dwarf that I want to just point out real quick. Just a couple of things. You'll notice the power button is right here. There's an indicator light here that will kind of tell you what mode it's in, um, when it's turned on and regular, ready to go, when it's imaging. Uh, there's also four uh, battery level buttons that are, or lights that are right down along here that kind of indicate to you, obviously, the battery charge. The one thing I will suggest to you right here uh, is the battery compartment. Um, now I've got the deluxe version and it comes with two rechargeable batteries and the batteries are a little bit odd looking quite frankly but that's the battery goes right in here first thing that you'll want to do when you unbox your Dwarf 2 is charge the battery up make sure that you've got a full charge to do that by the way there's a little slot let me put this back in here real quick There is a little slot, a USB-C slot right here. Now, it does not come with a charging cord, but we've all got about a million USB-C charging cords around. You could pick one up for a couple of bucks. You can plug that in and charge right off of it. This will also commu uh, communicate with your laptop if you want to uh, reach into the dwarf and uh, and pull all your pictures and your files out move them over to your computer for further processing we'll talk about that in another video i just wanted to show that to you uh, this is the heat sink up here there's also the deluxe version comes with a, a very small um uh, little SD card, uh, mini SD card. It's right here. And uh, you need to make sure that you pay attention to how to slide that in. There's actually a little, um, you probably can't see it, but there's a little picture there that indicates what direction you need to put that in. I found that it, you, you put it in upside down from the way I would have thought you would have put it. That's okay. The other thing about it is <clears throat> there's a little rubber cord here <clears throat> that holds this cover on. And I noticed last night, <coughs> you have to kind of fiddle with it a little bit to get it to go down flush. But then you can you can close this up, and, and you can see I'm having a little bit of a problem with it right now. There you go. But anyways, we've got that closed. Um, in order to use it, very, very simple. Uh, you just need to basically point it at the object that you're going to look at. The moon is right over here uh, towards my southeast right now. And so that's what I'm going to try to take a picture of tonight just to get kind of in practice. One other thing that I found out is that you have to calibrate. There's two cameras on this. There is a telephoto lens, which is what you're going to actually do the astronomy imaging with, and a wide angle lens camera that's what you're going to use of course you can use it for other types of photography but for my purposes uh, it's kind of like my finder scope it's where i can look at a wide picture you need to make sure those two things are calibrated okay so i got to take the dwarf 2 out um, a couple evenings now and do a little bit of imaging with it and i want to show you the results now i haven't had a lot of time to do any long exposure time so i've only got you know 5 10 15 minutes worth of data on each of these objects but let me let me show you what i've got the first thing that i did was um, i got a little bit of solar imaging done this is my first picture 
of the sun that I've ever taken with any instrument. I've never done any solar imaging before at all in my life. You could see it wasn't a spectacular day. There was only one sunspot on the sun that day. But overall, I was really impressed with how easy it was to get focus with the Dwarf 2. I actually used the autofocus routine, and it seemed to work fine. It, it worked very well. Um, I was able to take this picture, and again, let me, let me kind of back out here, and I'll show you this. I went ahead and stacked this in um, auto stacker, and then did a quick... Um, just a very quick stacking of it. Now I could take this over into Photoshop and I could increase the saturation to bring out the color a little bit. Um, but I haven't done that yet. I just kind of wanted to show you the just the basics here. And overall, I was very impressed with that. It also did very well on the moon. Let me show you. This is a video that I captured of the moon. Um, and again, I used the autofocus routine on here. I was very impressed. Things look pretty sharp and pretty tight. Now, due to the wide field, the moon looks fairly small in the picture. But if you wanted to do, get, if you're just getting started in lunar uh, photography, this is a pretty good camera. Look, it, it's gotten a little bit of the color detail up here, a little bit of this. Uh, if we increase the saturation in Photoshop, we could do this as a mineral moon. And you would see a little bit of the orange, just the iron ore deposits up here, a little bit of this darker gray uh, down in the, the various mare. So pretty good picture of the moon. Um, let me show you a couple of other pictures. Let me show you this. This is... Um, Right out of the camera, I took 55 10-second images of NGC 7000, which is the North American Nebula. And this is no processing whatsoever. This is just right out of the camera, the PNG file that it produced. Now, you can see I've got star stacking artifacts because I was in Alt-As mode and... Um, there is a way that you can polar align this. I haven't done that yet. I'll do another video on that. But this is, if, let me show you this. That's 55 10 second shots. This is less than five minutes worth of data total. Um, I'm sorry, t 10 minutes worth of data total. And you can see, I can see the North American Nebula coming in here. This is the Penguin Nebula. Now this was taken on a night where there was a nearly full moon out. Um, and so I've got a little bit of a gradient here. I've got a little bit of walking noise, but nothing that can't be processed out very easily. And had I collected more data, I think this could have turned into a very nice picture. But taken on a full moon, I did use the light pollution filter with this one, but I was really very impressed. Nice round star, so it's getting good tracking. And I was very impressed with this. Okay. Let me go over and show you another one. This is the Pleiades. Now again, this is not a lot of detail. This is 113 10 second shots taken at 80 gain. And here's what we got. Again, I can crop out this stacking uh, uh, artifact, take this over into Photoshop, probably remove a little bit of this gradient that's in here, and then, um, you know, probably increase the saturation a little bit and get a decent picture out of this. Um, the first year that I was doing astrophotography, I was desperately trying to catch a picture of the Pleiades and didn't get anything half this good. Now, a larger uh, ap aperture telescope and with much more expensive equipment, sure, you could get a better picture of the Pleiades. But for 10 minutes worth of data collection, and not doing any post-processing, just taking the PNG file right out of the camera, this is pretty good. I was impressed with this. Again, nice round star showing pretty good tracking on the Dwarf 2. Let me show you another one. This is Andromeda. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you. Over here in Cyril, I went ahead and downloaded a little script called OSC Preprocessing Without Darks, Biases, or Flats and went ahead and uh, stacked this. 
again, taken on the same night, f- nearly full moon. Andromeda was fairly low in the night sky when I started this. I took, I think, uh, well, I'll just show you exactly. This is... Um, This is 113 10 second shots, okay? Uh, So not a whole lot of data here, right? Um, And yet it came out pretty good. I didn't do any darks with this. So you can see I've got a little bit of noise in here. Um, It came out pretty good. Another hour or two of data collection. And my goodness, you'd be able to see these, uh, these dust frames, these dust lanes come out a little bit better. This could have turned into a pretty good picture. So overall, I've been pretty impressed with the with the uh, imaging quality of the Dwarf 2. Let's go and let me tell you a little bit more about what I think about this telescope. All right, let me take just a couple of moments and give you some final words uh, on this video, at least, about the Dwarf 2. If you've enjoyed this video, I appreciate that. I hope you'll keep coming back to my channel and subscribe to it, like this video. One of the things I want to let you know is I'm going to be coming back over the next year or so and doing a lot more videos about this particular uh, telescope. I'm very impressed by it. Uh, When I first heard about it and read about it, I thought there's no way that something so small and so simple is going to be able to do what they were claiming. I have been pleasantly surprised. The ease in which you can set up this telescope is just incredible to me. That calibration routine, the autofocus routine, the go-tos, everything worked extremely well, and I was impressed with it. And I think this makes that, those features make this a great telescope for beginners. I get the question a lot of times from people who want to get started in astrophotography. They'll say, what what telescope would you recommend? I'd like to spend maybe four to five hundred dollars. The reality is up until now, I don't think you can get into astrophotography at that price point. This telescope falls into that, that category. It works. And if you're looking to get into astrophotography and you don't want to go out and spend thousands of dollars to buy much larger, more complicated and difficult to use equipment, start with this. This is a perfect starter scope for you. It's easy to use. You can be set up and you can be running. It's going to teach you enough concepts There's enough built in here where you're going to learn the concepts that are necessary for much better astrophotography down the road. It's a great starter scope. This, in my opinion, is a perfect way to get kids and teenagers involved in astrophotography. One of the reasons for that is um, uh, they can set it up very quickly. They can use their phone. They can save the pictures on their phone with a little bit of Photoshop work. They can crop it, make it look really nice, and share it. It is a great telescope for that purpose. So I want to encourage you. In fact, I've become so convinced of that that I've actually become a Dwarf 2 affiliate. They offered me an affiliate um, uh, uh, package, and I decided to accept that because this is working very good. So if you're interested in buying one of these, you can help me out in my channel by going to the uh, affiliate links in the descriptions below. If you're in the United States, click on the one for Amazon. If you're outside the United States, click on the one that will take you to Dwarf 2. You'll get a little bit of a discount. You'll help my channel as well. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But there are limitations on this scope. If you're looking to do planetary imaging, this is probably not the scope for you. Now, you will be able to see the um, uh, rings around Saturn a little bit. You'll be able to see the moons around Jupiter. I have seen on their new software update, uh, they did a little video of it, Dwarf Labs, where they're claiming they were able to take pictures of the Great Red Spot. I have not verified that. I've not tried that yet, and it, but if that's possible. It will extend this a little bit more. It's great for deep sky objects. If you And, and by the way, that's what you should be taking pictures of, uh, getting out there and taking pictures of the nebulae, the star clusters, galaxies. This thing will do it for you. Um, it, uh, it, 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 um, 
it's a good scope. I'm impressed by it. And I want to encourage you to uh, take a look at it. Uh, there are a lot of other videos uh, out there about it. Uh, I don't think you can do better out there on the market right now uh, for a beginner starter scope than this. And by the way, for the uh, experienced astrophotographers out there, I love the fact that I could set my Skywatcher Heck 5 with the Red Cat on it. I could set it up, I can start running, and I can play around with some EAA with this while my big scopes are doing some of the harder work. So pretty nifty little product. I was impressed by it. I look forward to getting to play with it some more. In the next couple of weeks and months, I'm going to be putting up a lot more videos about this, so I hope that you'll subscribe. I hope that you come back to the channel, check it out a little bit more. Thanks for tuning in today.